Hi, it's February 8th. I'm Chris Robarge, and this is 508, a show about Worcester. Also on the show today, Brendan Mellican. Sir, how are you? I'm okay. I'm Mike Benedetti. This is 508, a weekly public affairs show about Worcester. Um, there's... There are certainly news stories in the city of Worcester this week. Most of them involve dis wars and slap fights, both online and offline. Not quite exactly what we talk about on the show. So instead, we're going to be talking to Chris about Worcester Boards and Commissions 101. Uh, you did, Chris, you did this awesome talk for uh, for this thing that the Worcester Free School and Occupy Worcester put together a couple of weeks ago about boards and commissions. Yeah, it was a uh, the the whole. Um, <laughs> Worcester Government 101 uh, panel, I thought, was fantastic. What of it I got to see. I actually had to leave before the end. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I did the uh, boards and commissions part. I am uh, a member of the Citizens Advisory Council. And, okay. uh, yeah. What, what's, the, what's the Citizens Advisory Council? So the Citizens Advisory Council is a, um, a, a body of city government, a volunteer body of city government. Okay. And we are charged with two main things. We're charged with um, d- being the first part of the selection process for people that apply for boards and commissions. Okay. So we get applications and resumes and stuff, and uh, we we review that information, and then we have everybody in for quarterly selection meetings. Okay. And uh, we sort of run down a list of candidates, and we bring people up and ask them a few questions in an open public meeting. And, uh, and then we take a vote as to whether or not they move forward in the process. Okay. Um, I'll talk more about that later. But uh, the second thing that we do, um, and I think the cooler and more important part of what we do, is we are the body that is charged with recruiting new people for uh, citizen boards and commissions. And uh, one of the things that's specifically in our portion of the charter, uh, the, the portion of the charter that makes the citizen ad- Citizens Advisory Council, is that uh, we're charged with bringing boards and commissions in line with the uh, makeup of the city. So we're, we're, we're basically, we're supposed to diversify uh, boards and commissions. Oh, really? Okay. Um, to the point that they are representative of the makeup of the city, which for better or for worse, um, probably for worse. Uh, at this point, we aren't really there yet. So, so how do you, what are what are these? What is this idea of boards and commissions all about? So the boards and commissions. There's 29 boards, citizen boards and commissions in the city of Worcester, okay. and they they do a whole range of different things. Um, but they, in essence, they're all um, they're they're all individual bodies of government that are made up of citizen volunteers. Okay. And uh, they, what they do sort of depends on um, what, what border commission it is and what type of border commission it is. There's a few different types. My, my, my sense is that it's very tempting to try to come up with a taxonomy or broad generalizations about the boards and commissions, but in fact it's just completely a mix of things. Yeah, it, it really is a mix of things. I mean... There are boards and commissions from affirmative action to uh, licensing to um, disability to uh, the Hope Cemetery Commission. I mean, they, they sort of run the gamut of, of lots of, of different things in the city. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, it's tough to really pin them down, except that they all deal with city matters. And they all have different kinds of power? Yeah. So there's, there's a few different kinds, and... Um, like I said when I gave the talk a few weeks ago, uh, forgive me if I occasionally look down because yes. this is a, a more detailed talk than I'm used oh, to giving. Oh, by the so. way, not only are there notes down here, there's also <laughs> knives, <laughs> fighting knife. Can I take it out one-handed? <clears throat> no, can you help me out here? This knife is also going to be on the show today. Potentially, also this knife. Thanks for thanks for bringing that up, Chris. Anyway. Yeah, and and thus the uh, boards and commissions uh, presentation takes a turn for the weird. <laughs> Um, anyway, so yeah, so anyway, there are a few different kinds. Um, I'll go to my list okay. to sort of remember exactly Absolutely. what they are. Sure. Um, there are a few different classifications. So uh, there's executive boards, and executive boards can actually set policy for city departments. There's advisory boards, and they can provide um, information or or advice, basically to uh, to council or to um, the city manager or to the school committee. Okay. Uh, but that advice is non-binding. Mm-hmm. Um, there's regulatory boards, and uh, regulatory boards, they you know they create regulation and they enforce regulation. 
Would that be um, like the zoning board? Yeah, the zoning board, the license board. Um, those would be a few just off the top of my head that, right. are, that are regulatory boards. There are others. Mm-hmm. Um, they can do some other things. They, uh, they deal with disputes um, within their area of purview. Um, they issue permits and licenses, that sort of stuff. Okay. And then there are a few boards, I think just a couple, that are actually classified as unclassified. They just don't really fit any of those categories. It's like the Hope Cemetery people that are actually tasked with murdering people and filling up the cemetery. <laughs> what does, I, what I'd does, have to look into that one. Well, yeah, serious question though, like where, with, with something like Hope Cemetery, like where where did the idea for some of these boards come from? Like who at some point in time said, you know what, Hope Cemetery is just too big of a thing for us elected officials to handle or the administration? Like it seems I can't remember any like a. a a board being added to the roster recently? I mean, like, were these all creations of the charter? Or yeah. are they, can, can we add them as we go? Or? Um, that's a good question, and I don't really know the answer, honestly, as far as whether we can add them or subtract them as we go. Mm. Um, they, they were created as, as, <clears throat> a, uh, as a part of the, of the city charter. So okay. cool. they were all sort of built from that. Um, yeah, and, and something like Hope Cemetery, it's, it's sort of interesting. Um, actually, the person you should talk to about Hope Cemetery is, uh, is Nicole. Um, Apostola. Yeah. Thank I've you. met her before. I've met her before, too, but I can't pronounce her last name. So sorry, Nicole, <laughs> yeah, if you're watching. You um, she would be an awesome person to talk to about Hope Cemetery. But Hope Cemetery has dealt with things in the past, like um, you know maintenance things and, and, and things of that nature, but also sort of interesting things like when... Uh, when we had the Mandian population uh, mm-hmm. move into yeah. Worcester, they have some really specific um, burial traditions. And so one of the things that Hope Cemetery Commission talked about was, you know, what are those? How does Hope Cemetery fit into those traditions? That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, they, they do those sorts of things, even things that seem sort of, you know, boring or out in left field, like a Hope Cemetery Commission. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> so Normally, I would list all the boards and commissions. I'm, I'm not going to list all the boards and commissions. There's thirty. Um, there's thirty some. Of there's them. twenty nine. Twenty nine of them. Yes. All right. How many do you um, pay? Zero. License commission. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, license commission. One? License commission pays. I know it's not a town. Think it's just about a that. Siphon, but is that the only one? I think that license commission is the only one that okay. pays. This is what I love. Is that there's no there's nothing that you can say that's true in general of all of these, is yeah. there? Almost almost nothing. Are, yeah. are, does everybody on all the boards and commissions have to be not employees of the city? So most boards and commissions, <laughs> you can't be an employee of the city. That's also one of the things <clears throat> you can't say about all the boards and commissions, but you can say it about most of them. Um, if you're an employee of the city, you can't be on most boards and commissions. There are a few advisory boards and commissions that you can be a member of. Okay. Anyway, so 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 please please go please move forward. We don't have to list them all, but no, it's okay. Saying. Yeah. So uh, we won't list them all. Um, you know, sort of talking about you know like we were with Hope Cemetery. Um, one of the things that I've really tried to convey to people is that um, I think that sometimes people look at the boards and commissions. Um, and they don't, they haven't seen minutes, they, and they don't really see what interaction they're having with city government. And so they sort of think it's this like blow off thing where, mm. you know, you go to a meeting every once in a while and you don't really do anything. Um, but a lot of the boards and commissions have done really important work in the past. Okay. Um, and so uh, a few examples of that are, uh, I mean, if you guys have followed, I mean, we're talking about obvious ones like, uh, you know, license. License is constantly doing license things that are right. that are important. You know, they they Most decide. Yeah, it's things like that, or they decide whether you know you can have a beer when you're playing golf at Green Hill, and you know mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, conservation is another big one that's always um, has been in the news a few times recently, but mm-hmm. is always doing conservation type work and protecting wetlands and things like that. Um, human rights is another one that has been uh, in the news. Um, somewhat recently, you know, they've brought a few things in front of council. Um, they have asked the city to essentially, I think, revisit their uh, plan to end homelessness in Worcester, which has been, uh, you know, a topic of import lately. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things, even in something like uh, the Cable Television Advisory Board, which people are like, you know, and that's a board that's not super active all the time. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that they do is um, they have an influence and uh, and an ability to advise on who gets our cable contract. Yeah. Um, so you know, I know you were at the talk a few weeks ago, and uh, apparently from my survey at the talk, 
uh, folks are not super big fans of uh, charter. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the things that they get to help to decide is whether or not they get our contract next time for cable television. Mm -hmm. So they do, uh, they do a lot of important work. Okay. So there's, so there's these 29 boards and commissions. They're all kind they work on all kinds of different things. Some of them have power. Some of them are just advisory. Mm -hmm. Um, how do people, is the next thing to talk about how people get on this? Yeah, pretty much. Um, so or we're is there get, something else we need to cover? No, that's, that's, that's the next stage of, uh, of the talk. Okay. Um, so if you want to be on a board and commission, um, the process is basically this. Uh, what you should do is go to the city website, and uh, on the left-hand side, there's the nav thing, and uh, there's a, a listing for boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. So you go there. Um, they've actually done a, a decent job with making it fairly accessible to see all the boards and commissions, okay. um, and and more importantly, to see the vacancies. Mm -hmm. So you can see what's actually available where there's open seats. Um, what they haven't done a great job with, and what we as CAC are still working to do a better job on, is really creating descriptions that talk about what the boards and commissions actually are. Most of what's there as a description for the board of commission is just whatever the charter says the board of commission is. Mm. And sometimes that's helpful, and sometimes it doesn't really tell you a whole lot it's about what they do. It's diverged since the, since the charter. Yeah, or it's just a really abstract description of, oh, of okay. what they do that isn't necessarily related to what they do when they go in and sit down and have a meeting. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so you know, you can go there, you can find uh, a board or commission or some boards or commissions that interest you. Um, then you need to fill out an application. Um, there is an application on the city website. I think that's the easiest way to do it personally. Um, that's how I filled out my application. You can also get them in uh, at City Hall at the HR office. You can also call the HR office, and they will send you one in the mail. Okay. So you get this application, you fill it out. Um, I definitely recommend uh, also sending a cover letter or a letter of interest and a resume. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, towards the end. So you send this thing in, um, you put in your application with, you know, your cover letter um, and your resume. And at some point, someone from the city is going to get in contact with you and they're going to let you know when our next selection meeting is. So that's the part of the process that gets sort of interesting for most people or a little bit uh, maybe um, disconcerting for people. So the way we, we run as an open process. Um, we, all, all of all of what CAC does is done in public, um, literally all of it. Okay. So then you get called to this selection meeting, and <clears throat> excuse me, when you go to the selection meeting, you're in a room with a bunch of people, and there's a panel of people, um, the, the citizens advisory council upon uh, you know, which I sit. Are you you and you guys are among the boards and commissions? We, yeah, we are technically a board. We are technically a board. Okay. I'm um, sorry, we're, we're technically a council, but yeah, we are, but I mean, you we got are on, a board. You got council. on the CAC by going through the same process. Is what no. You're no. Okay. Well, okay, fine. As always, yeah. there's exceptions. Yeah, <laughs> so let's, <laughs> okay. So uh, to, to, we can, we don't, we don't have to cover that right now. We can no, but, but a, a short answer is, is that CAC, one of the few things that CAC doesn't decide on is CAC because okay. it's considered a conflict to be picking our own members, yes, basically. Yes, yeah. So, um. For almost everything else, you go to this, uh, you go to this selection meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a panel of people at the front. We call people up. Uh, we've already reviewed whatever you've given us in terms of a uh, an application and a resume and stuff like that. Um, if we have any questions, which we usually do, uh, we'll ask those questions, and then uh, we'll take a vote. Um, and that's the part of the process that freaks people out. I think a little bit is, or more than a little bit is. Uh, that you're basically going to go in front of this group of people and tell them why you think you're a good candidate. And then they're immediately going to decide right in front of you in public. And you could be rejected in public. You'd just be shot down. Yep. You, you can also you're be, be accepted on the library board. You better but. think again. <laughs> library board is actually selected by council, which oh, is okay. a whole different For, right. can of worms. As always. Yeah. Exceptions. Anyway. I know. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit disconcerting for people, and I get it. Um, I did actually go through that process because I didn't originally apply for CAC. I applied for something else. So I've been in that seat mm. facing that group of people. Um, and it's it's not easy to do. But we have an open process, and I think it's really important that we have an open process as opposed to some of the things that are selected through different processes, mm. less open processes. Right. So anyway, um, you need six votes to move forward. 
Um, so okay. if you don't get six votes, you don't get moved forward. Okay. You can reapply for the same thing. You can reapply for other things. We encourage people to reapply. Um, just because we say no once to one thing doesn't mean that you should not reapply. It might just be a bad fit or a bad timing. Could just be that. I mean, the other thing, honestly, is we, you have to get six votes no matter how many of us there are. There's 11, there should be 11 members. It's an 11 member uh, Citizens Advisory Council. Mm. Right now, we only have nine members. Oh. At times, we've had less than nine members. So it also just depends on who's at that, on who's just sitting there that day. Yeah. Okay. It de- it, honestly, it depends on how many people are sitting there that day. I mean, you know, if there's six people that mm. have been able to make it for that meeting, you've got to get all six. Yeah. Um, for better or for worse. I mean, it's, it's kind of tough. But right. So p- anyway, people should reapply if they don't make it. But if you do make it, you get moved forward in the process. And the next thing that happens is that you get a call from the city. Mm-hmm. Um, I should stress that it doesn't generally happen quickly. So if you get moved forward in the process mm-hmm. and you don't hear anything for a while, uh, they're going to call you. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just takes a little bit sometimes. They'll ask you to come in uh, for a meeting, at, generally at City Hall. And the meeting is usually with a representative from the city manager's office uh, the staff liaison for whatever board or commission you have uh, applied for and been moved forward for, and then a representative from the human resources office. Okay. They're going to sit down, and that's more like a traditional job interview. Like they're going to spend some time with you, like probably right. a half an hour to, to an hour, okay. um, and really want to go through stuff more. Okay. Um, it's, it's a more similar process to what people are used to going through a job interview. They're not going to make a decision to your face. Um, they're going to take that information and they're going to bring it back to the manager's office and uh, the manager and his office will make a final decision on uh, whether you get placed on a board or what board you get placed on. Okay. And so how long, how long does the process, you, what's the ballpark for how long this process takes? It's, I mean, it's, it's a process. It's um, like six months, a year, uh, probably, a no, month? Yeah, probably less than six months, I would say. It depends on when you apply because okay. if you apply – and there's a selection meeting in three weeks, you'll be up in three weeks. If you right. apply and there's not one for two and a half months, it's two and a half months before you really start the process. Right. But from the selection meeting to the time that you get a decision is probably a month or two. Okay. And how long are people, how long, are, what is your term of office? Or I don't know if term of office is the right term, but how long are you on the board of the commission? Yeah, it, it I mean, you, you are, on the you board are, uh, you are put forward for a term. It does depend on the board of commission. <laughs> Uh, there's always exceptions. Yes. Um, most of them are three-year <clears throat> terms. Okay. And the way that most of them work is that you can serve two three-year terms or a total of eight years. So this is a serious commitment. This is We're talking about a six-month selection process or several months of a selection process, and then you have, then you have a three-month commitment to be on the board of the commission. A three-year term. Three, yeah. Sorry, three-year a, a minimum, commitment. Yeah, a, a three-year commitment to be on. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's not, and that's why we have the the process. It's uh, you know people talk about uh, there's a lot of reasons why we have the process, but one of the reasons why the process is as in depth as it is is because you are being appointed for a three year term to mm-hmm. a, to a board or commission that is going to rely on you to attend at minimum to attend so that the board or commission can have quorum, yeah, right? Because they can't decide on things or do anything if they don't have quorum, and then additionally to that, to really bring something to the table. Okay. So should people? So one thing you were saying at the at your talk previously was people might actually want to sign up for multiple things. Yeah. So um, the the last thing that I wanted to talk about was was sort of uh, tips for okay. uh, as someone who is one of the people that uh, will probably or definitely be making having one of the votes in making that decision. Some of the tips uh, that I would give from my side of the table are. Um, you should apply for multiple things. Um, it, it's the vacancies are a moving target, and so you may, if you apply for one thing, it may have been filled in the period of time at which you, you know, between when you saw it and when the next selection meeting is. Um, you, they may have someone else that can only fit that spot. It's good to f- try and find a few different things uh, that that you would be interested in and and apply for two or three things. Yeah. Um, that's the best way to have a, a, the best chance to get on one. Because then you're just sort of getting all the process done rather than doing yeah. the process and then waiting two months and then doing it again and waiting two more months. Right. Yeah. And and if you have applied for two or three things, you get to do it all in one selection meeting. So hmm. we'll, and, and it's all in the same, you know, we'll go through, 
uh, why are you a good candidate for um, the Conservation Commission? Mm-hmm. And go through that stuff. Okay, you know, why are you a good candidate for the Historical Commission? Or, mm-hmm. or what? So um, it doesn't add a lot to the process, and it definitely increases your chances of winding up on a border commission if that's something you really want to do. I want to cover the other tips, but I also want to talk about news real quick. Can we talk about news real quick? We'll yeah. go back to tips. More tips after this break. <laughs> Two pieces of news we actually have to talk about this week. One is that the FYC, which was the successor to HBML at 420 Pleasant Street, the FYC is, is closed, and we have a quick interview with Pat Scully about that. Pat, what is this place? This is the International Fuck Yeah Center, yeah. 420 Pleasant Street in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh huh. And today is the last day. Unfortunately, yes. What's been going on here before the last day? These, these past years. The best shit ever. Yeah. What? Awesome events, skate ramps, concerts, you name it, the illest stuff ever. What did, what did you learn from your experience running the FYC? Anyone can do anything. Have fun and enjoy your life. What's next, what's next for you, man, now that, now, that, now that you're moving out of this space? I don't know. I want to keep doing it. Hopefully find somewhere cool. Put on some shows. Have uh, some good concerts. Keep Worcester awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should, uh, you, yeah, you, the person watching this television show, do something, do something with your life, do something. Thanks, Pat. You're welcome. Have fun. And then also, last week, we saw the first ever joint Occupy Worcester Tea Party protest, which was a protest against the 2000s. 12 National Defense Authorization Act down at the federal level. Uh, kind of, kind of a cool thing. Um, so back to tips and tricks. Actually, let's let's talk about these knives real quick. Brendan, what is this? It's a K bar. This is like an old, this is like an old school. Except the handle is kind of a rubbery plastic. This is like an old school thing. Design wise, yeah, I mean the, the design's been around for a while, but those are the, the more modern handles that K bars throw in. And then we have this little Gerber. Pocket knife. I can't do it because I'm not badass enough. I can't get the thumb thing to go. It's probably because you're holding the camera. I know. There. I know. I was getting it to go so well before. Yeah, so you've got to work that in. I have mine, so I could flip it up. <laughs> there it is. All right. So this, how dull are these? Um, well, the the pocket knife is not that dull, really. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna give you me take that. The uh, the K bar, however, though, you know, and I've I've seen this in in, in a number of places that. These are actually starting to come from the factory for some reason without a good edge on them, and, and I don't know why that is. We're um, gonna use that. We're gonna use the power chef's knife device. All right. D- is that okay? I, just as long as you don't destroy it. Yes, I'm fine with that. Well, that's what I'm asking you. Okay, go ahead. Let me see if it, I don't even know if it'll fit. It's pretty thick. Uh, that might not fit. Uh, it's too thick. Oh okay. boy. Forget about it. All right, we'll try it on here. Anyway, so so Chris was just saying about. Now, are we supposed to skip over the uh, serrated section? We could skip over the serrated section. Well, I'm asking you. You're the guy that the go list claims can sharpen things that are going to cut my arm off. This I just... do, you could do the serrated section. This, this, this part will this. People don't care about knife tips on this show. People need to hear about how to get on boards and commissions. I'm sorry. I don't know. I, I'm, I might be mostly interested in the knife tips. Do we have a, a cutlery commission in the city? <laughs> no? We may have to get that into our next uh, city charter. Now, how are we going to test this? Does anyone want to volunteer an arm? <laughs> it's getting there. I mean, that part is getting, it's getting there. Now, what exactly are you doing here? What? What exactly are you doing here? Sharpening a knife? No, I, I understand that, but like... Oh, do you want me to narrate what this is? Well, it's, you know, it's... So we sort of, well, what we did is we sort of ran this through this thing. Yep. And then at some point you feel that you've raised a little bit of a burr. Okay. Along the edge. So that means that you know you're getting it to some level of sharpness, right? Mm-hmm. And now we're switching over to the uh, Spyderco Sharp Maker, mm-hmm. um, and we're just like doing step one of the Sharp Maker. See, now you're doing. People are going to criticize my angle and everything. On Your YouTube. technique, yeah. And then what are the two little brass-looking uh, antennae These that are, are behind you? These are ceramic doodads. Okay. And this is. Uh, and we're trying to sort of get it to some kind of minimal. So I should be able to shave with this when you're done. Yeah, you see, so you see, before, whenever we tapped it against the paper, it didn't really go into the paper. And now, 
You know, so no, it the top. folds the paper. My whole thing is These are Chris's notes that he's going to be using to give See, it a presentation. See, we can cut into the paper a little bit. Yeah, but now Chris can't thing. actually tell people about boards and commissions anymore. This is going to make my so notes so much cool. How do you get out of boards and commissions? Talk to him. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, there are a couple of other uh, tips. Um, there were until Mike yeah. laughed at them. <laughs> at one point, there were other tips that I had. Um yeah, so the, I mean, the big ones. Uh, it, it, one of the big ones was to apply for more than one. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, let me ask you this: is so I, I know historically one of the problems has been uh, actually just getting people to apply for the board, and, but not for all the commission. Like license commission, it always seems to be full. Yep. Um, maybe the stipend has something to do with it. Maybe the the, 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 the power that's uh, you know uh, it comes along with that. I don't know. Um, but I'm sure there, it's some combination thereof. There seems to be boards and commissions that uh, they've had difficulty getting. Uh, staffed in a reasonable amount of time it is um, why is that <laughs> um, it's a good question uh, some of them I think it's because they are boring or mm-hmm. because they uh, appear when you read the city charter about them to be boring sure. I think it's probably more often what happens um, some of them uh, I don't really know why uh, and that's one of the things that uh, we as um, Citizens Advisory Council are, are working on is sort of a restructuring of and, and setting up some subcommittees and one of the things that one of them is going to look at not there yet uh, one, of, one of the things that one of them is going to look at is is exactly that question mm-hmm. so we can maybe have a better answer for uh, for all of them um, but yeah there are some that have been consistently hard to staff or consistently hard to staff in certain districts Okay, so and that's the other thing too. So they're broken out by district. Some of them are broken out by party affiliation. They are elections is broken out by par, uh, party affiliation and um, license too, right? I believe that's. I think license. I, I don't know the answer well. to that honestly. Okay. Yeah, um, license is honestly one that we've. We, we just only, let them do their own thing. Well, yeah. and it's it's there's there's so few openings that yeah. it's only come in front of me once. Okay. Um, I I m- mostly have looked at the boards of commissions that I'm interviewing people for, and we've only had one opening in the time that I've been on. Okay. Um, elections is for sure. I don't know about license. Okay. Um, otherwise, they're broken up kind of like council is. There's at-large seats, mm-hmm. and there are uh, district seats to make sure that there's a good coverage of citywide people and sure. people from different portions of the city, obviously. Now you mentioned one of the goals was actually uh, hitting some sort of... Uh, uh, Demographics, uh, in terms of demographics, actually making the boards and commissions appear to be representative of the city as a whole. Are, are there any boards and commissions that would have uh, race based, or ethnicity based, uh, you know, makeups on them, or well, I mean, or there, is it just regional? I mean, is, or do any of them require like a certain number of women on board? Or does any of them no. require a certain number of ethnicities on board? Or no, and I, and I think that um, I think that by the nature of. Um, of the rules of selection, it would be impossible to, to have those sorts of requirements. There that would have to boards. go before the Human Rights Commission, and, and right. or the, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are boards and commissions. I mean, you know, there there is a uh, you know there is a status of women uh, mm-hmm. commission, um, and you know, but it's I, it's I think it's mostly staffed by women. Uh, but I mean, there, it's you don't have to be a woman to be on it. Sure. Um, you know, there's an affirmative action committee. Um, you don't have to be a minority to be on it. I feel like we're getting close. That was an old hair. It doesn't count. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but yeah, in general, there are uh, there are very few requirements for almost all of the boards and commissions. Um, most of them don't require certifications or education requirements or other sorts of requirements. But for the advisory council, are you folks trying to find people that do have some sort of relevant experience that might match up well with the board, or is it just people who seem really interested, eager, and capable of doing something meaningful? Yeah, so, I mean, philosophically, that's kind of a discussion we've had a lot um, at, at our meetings, um, and, you know, I, I think it, it, it's it's both. Um, you definitely want people with, with some level of experience and interest in the area. I, that they're uh, that they're looking to um, you know have three years worth of, of an influence mm-hmm. over, but I think that one of the things that's happened in the past is uh, there's been this inclination to send like you know send eleven architects to the planning commission, mm-hmm. and, they, and they don't need eleven architects. Um, they almost definitely need one or two architects, right? But they probably also need a construction worker, and mm-hmm. they probably also need um, you know just citizens, right? Um, so. I, I think that there needs to be on a lot of these. There, there really needs to be not only a um, a demographic, uh, or you know, um, 
um, you know, socioeconomic uh, diversity. There needs to be a diversity of, of uh, occupations and all, and all sorts of other things mm-hmm. uh, that will make them operate in a way that's that's suits more people in the city. Okay. Now, which of the uh, commissions have the greatest need at this point? Are there any that people that might be watching should be? Yeah. So, I mean, there's there's a couple that are um, <laughs> there's a couple that are uh, you know have been at least in my time sort of chronically understaffed. Um, cable TV is one of them. Uh, really? But, yeah. That well, one I do find interesting because I think you you hit something that that that's kind of a big deal, right? I mean, I don't think anybody actually likes Charter. I mean, yeah. and no offense to our friends over at Charter, but like they're awful, yeah, and that's right. not to say that there's any better like cable providers out there. I mean, whether you're looking at Comcast, Time Warner, whatever, it, they all seem equally miserable if you talk to their customers. But it's also one of those areas that we kind of have put ourselves in the position of having a an intentional municipal regional monopoly. And you would think people might be more interested in, in, in having some say in that. Well, sort of I think cable's sort of unique, and I think that the way that it's traditionally functioned is that. Um, they do very little in between uh, contract times. Mm-hmm. Um, I would kind of like to see that change. I think mm-hmm. there's probably things that they could be doing over a constant period sure. of time. But I think that's part of why with that one. Um, but there are others. Um, but mostly, like I said, it's, it's a moving target. The, the best thing to do is to go to the city website or to get in touch with the HR department or to get in touch with me if you know me. Um, and I can tell you where, uh, you know. We're where actually over now. So, yeah. um, I just ruined everything. I wasn't. I was so. I, I was so interested in this conversation, Mike, that we actually just went over time. We at? We're at a uh, thirty minutes and a uh, fifteen seconds, and we don't have a knife. We don't have. Uh... Chris, thanks for being on. <laughs> Look at that. Thanks for being on the show, Chris. Thanks for bringing us paper. <laughs> I I do I about eventually, people should sign up for boards and commissions if they're going to be in the city for three years and they want to be involved in the government that way. It's a good way. You've been on a board or commission? I'm not. I always have this idea that I'm moving out of Worcester in like two months. I was on the cultural commission for a while. It was actually a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good Sign up. Sure. Have a good time. Yeah, do it. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Thanks to everyone for participating in Worcester by watching this show. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Well.